Mr. Josh, how was your week? Um, a little busy, uh, a bit. Um, it's about to get busier next. Did week. watch? Uh, did watch Monster Squad as I, as I told you the other night. Yeah, um, Monster watched Squad. that earlier this week. That's, what, um, that's as well as the surprised. new Child's Play. How was that? That was um, that was interesting. Okay, I I, I didn't I didn't see yeah. that. One. I was on Monster Squad, but I haven't seen uh, the new. Uh, yeah, it's not. Play. Uh, it's not bad. Okay. It's not terrible. I think my gripe with it is that the the story. I think I think it's a story that could have been told without it being a child's play movie. Uh, like you could have just had it be its own thing rather than have to use Chucky. And all oh, that. Oh, it almost seems like kind of almost, would you say, uh, kind of just brand recognition? A bit, yeah, because it doesn't even follow. So in the original Child's Play films, you know, the reason why he's in the doll is because he uses, like, voodoo magic as he was dying and transferred his soul into the doll. This one has none of that. There's no magic in it. It's just a bad AI. <laughs> That's it. Got that's it. really it, and that's a little. You could have just told that story without it being child's play. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Mark Hamill did a really good job on the voice. Oh, that's I really good can't me. imagine Mark Hamill doing a bad job. Of course. Um, I mean, the casting was fine. Um, Honestly, I mean, it's, it's an really alright film. It's just, really just don't know. It's eh, eh. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. What else you got going on, sir? Packing. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, pretty much, much the it. other. That's that's pretty much the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot of that. That's always a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. But soon it will be over, and that'll be good once all that's said and done and settled. Yeah. Oh, I did. Um, one of the local hobby town, actually the only local hobby town <laughs> store. Uh, they announced that they're going out of business, so oh, they're having sucks. like a thirty percent off on everything until they choose a final closing date so i went friday picked up some paints and brushes and stuff like that it's a bittersweet thing when it's like a cool store doing that because the sweet part is obviously hella discounts and then sad that it's going away yeah uh sadly i, I really didn't uh, ever go to that store very much i know i always saw it but i never really went there until i i started getting things to you know work on gundam models right or and um, they never really had, from what I was uh -oh. dwindling over the month, oh, so okay. I think it was one of those, like, in, it was inevitable that it was going to happen, but apparently the owners chose to retire, and that's why, mm -hmm. so, eh, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. We can't force them to not retire, unfortunately. Well, I mean, that's not really unfortunate, but, you know, <laughs> there's that. Oh, um, also, I'm going to change the podcast in real quick, so sorry if anyone on the audio fucking hears this shit. Okay. All right. Well, the audio quality may or may not change, but uh, I had I forgot I had it on the wrong setting, but it's oh. fine. It's all okay. good. You guys might not have even noticed it if I didn't say anything, so it should be fine. It'll be interesting, actually, because I wanted to do a litmus strip test there anyway, so there we go. Now, Mallory's is going to be on a different setting, so here we Sweet. go, Miss Mallory. Um, well, my week was pretty busy with work. Um, we had a bunch of training we had to do, mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't really get to play much video games this week just because of everything that was going on. Um, I did get to write. Oh, I got to see the new Joker movie, mm -hmm. um, and it's... Definitely hard to watch. Um, I think I cried for like two hours after watching it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, like it's it's. I don't know. My we went. We had a great time. It was me and my friend. And uh, yeah, for two hours after that, I couldn't stop crying. And it was yeah. I even had to go home and just be like, no, guys, I don't. Want, I don't want to talk to you guys right now. Like, I'm not doing this. Um, and mm -hmm. then let's see. What else did I do? I played bass a little bit more, and yeah, that was that was about it. I went to the grocery store. <laughs> that, that's good. That's uh, like, that's exciting. Yeah. Right? Like, oh man, what kind of groceries did you get? Uh, I got Fucking eggs and bread. Oh shit! Oh fuck! <laughs> I got chicken. She got she got a bunch of things that have never been oh, bought I won before. My, by my human. company Halloween costume and like office decorating thing. We did the purge. I set up a projector. Um, I did that. I got to climb on tables a lot. I went to another show. Uh, I actually went to a concert um, this week for Sophie uh, Sophie Tucker up in Austin, which was so much fun. 
been dancing all week since I went to see them. And they actually did a game, uh, uh, music for FIFA, which was cool. One of their songs is in there. Not that I play FIFA, but I just think it's a cool fact. You mean microtransaction the game? Yeah. yeah. Dun, but dun, dun. like I said, I didn't I didn't know that until I looked them up. Um, I bought new tights for work. They have schools on them. I'm actually wearing them right now. There you go. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my week. All right. Uh, I wrapped up Sinking City, so... Uh, another one of my, uh, short 20, 30 hour games. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I have, so in this one I did, and I beat it in 10 days. And so for a 30 hour game, that's not like awful, but obviously that's a lot of time. And that's about 30 hours without any side quests. So what I did in this game is there are side quests that could have stretched the game out quite a bit. And they were good narratively, and there were actually some creepy ones. But I uh, didn't want to do that because I was really scared I was going to fall into the thing I talked to you guys about before where I said I do a bunch of side quests and I get burned out on the game and then I never finish mm-hmm. it. So I did not want that yeah. to happen with this because it is a good game. So I just said, fuck the side quests, unfortunately. Uh, and so, uh, there we go. So then I pushed through that and then I ended up beating it again in a a little under 30 hours, uh, and 10 days. So good stuff. That was me just clearly focusing on just that game and not playing anything else. And so now that I beat a little short game like that, I started The Witcher 3 on Switch. So there goes another 120 hours. Um, (laughs) now with that being the case, what I will say about Witcher on Switch, because I'm not, I'm probably not going to do a video on it just because it's all been said and done. Uh, Jim put it quite quaint and it lines up with what I have to say which is obviously graphical downgrades there but considering that they got The Witcher 3 to work on Switch and it isn't an awful port unlike Overwatch which we'll talk about later um, it's one of those things where I'm like this is still cool magic yes it's obviously low res it's like you're running The Witcher on low spec on PC but at the same and it's not at 60 it's locked at 30 but That being said, very seldom does it dip below 30. Even when it dips, you hit like maybe 27 frames, which is like hardly discernible. Honestly, it actually does a pretty good job of staying at 30. And then on top of that, it doesn't look bad, especially when you're playing it in handheld mode. It doesn't look bad at all on on, on the big TV, but on handheld mode is where it hides any type of flaw. And honestly, it's, it's really, really not bad that, you know. So... Witcher 3, good port, good port. Another awesome Switch port, and a game like, a massive game like that will only benefit from me actually taking it to go. So, it's a really good port, and I definitely would advise, unless you're, like, I'm a pretty bad graphics snob, but unless you are just at the point now where it's more about the graphics than gameplay, is the only time I advise you don't pick it up. But aside that, if you want to be able to, or you've never been able to really get into The Witcher because don't have time to just sit at home and play games, and maybe you could dip into it a few hours at a time on the go, I would definitely say it's worth picking up. So, good port, good port. Like, talk about stretching. Oh, I actually bought it physically. (laughs) Oh, you did? I know. Oh my gosh, I feel like we need to, like, give him a gold star. (laughs) I only did it because the packaging is more than, it's different than just the plastic case. The plastic case was inside of a cardboard box. You get, like, a lot of goodies from what I saw. Yeah, so that's the only reason I bought it physically. (laughs) But other than that, I wouldn't have. I'm so proud of you. So that cartridge is never going to leave the Switch because I'm probably not going to buy another physical game unless I, (laughs) unless they do something, you know. Unless they have some really cool collector's edition for Bayo 3 or something, which they probably will. Mm -hmm. In fact, they'll probably do a Switch for Bayo 3, which means I'm going to actually switch out my Switch when that happens. But anyways, Um, um, the final game I played this week, I did actually a First Impressions video on it, and I was very surprised, was Killer Queen Black. So I didn't even know what it was. I kept seeing it on the Steam uh, homepage and um, the Switch the eShop store, because I check the eShop store really constantly because there are a lot of good games that go on sale and sometimes the sale just lasts a day or two. So I, I'm like, I check the, uh, every day I check the uh, eShop page mm-hmm. and um, I keep seeing the artwork and it's just a silhouette of like a uh, queen bee xenomorphish looking thing mm-hmm. and uh, I kept seeing that artwork and that's where I was just like, that's how I know it's A, catchy artwork or like, it's so simple 
uh, or just good promotion is just the fact that, you know, seeing that name Killer Queen Black and that silhouette of that xenomorph looking bee, I'm just like, okay, I don't know what the fuck this is, but I keep seeing it. So my interest is peaked and I literally did not know anything about it. So... Uh, it turns out that if you're a Discord uh, Nitro user, you can play it for free right now until that gets yanked. And um, I decided, hey, fuck it, for free? It's only 20 bucks, first of all, so I can already safely say now, just pick it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially on Switch, which I will pick it up on. That's a really fun game to have on there because it's a cool multiplayer game. So she my friends. It's pretty much a sports game, which I didn't expect. So... Basically, hmm. you uh, it's a uh, there's three ways you can win in this uh, quote unquote sports like game as I've dubbed it. If that's a real term, I didn't know, so I'm going to take credit for it. Uh, so it's Trademark. basically what I would call a sports like game in the sense where it's not necessarily it's a, like a team thing, but it's not. So you there's uh, the worker bees and the queen bee. Now only one person gets to be the queen bee, and then they have a support team of uh, uh, three other bees and. What you can so with the queen bee you can attack and then but you have to be really careful with the way you play because if you're slayed three times that's one way that the other team can lose so that's mm-hmm. called what they call a military victory is if the queen is killed three times the other ways you can win is there's one where you can win by snail in the middle of the map there's just this fat ass snail and if you can ride that slow bitch all the way to your goal. You win. Because it's so goddamn <laughs> slow, and you can get killed like a million times probably trying to do it, that you could try to do it that way. The final way you can win is uh, what they call uh, economy win, where you mm. can win by collecting these berries, and there's uh, X amount of holes, I believe it's like eight or something like that in your home base, if you fill up eight berries, or if you uh, are able to... Oh, what the fuck was the other way? Well, anyways, eight berries. I'm sure that was, I think there was another way. Fuck it. Anyways... Uh, so because there's like three, four ish ways to win, there's so much going on that you got to kind of think strategically, what is advantageous? You know, Mm -hmm. me, I like to go for the snail. Uh, I tend to be like, uh, once you get on the snail, if anyone else tries to, they just get like sucked in and eaten by the snail. So they're at that point, they'll try to kill you. Now, regular workers can ride the snail or collect berries. Mm -hmm. Um, however... Workers can also change themselves into an attack class. Now, when you do the attack class, you have to be careful because once you convert your worker into an attack worker or there's like other things, there's like a sword one and then there's like another defensive like lance one. When you do that, you cannot ride the snail or collect berries anymore. So you Mm -hmm. give up your ability to help with an economy win. You now go to defending the queen or defending... Um, one of the other workers. So what would like a lot of strategy people would see is they would, see, my teammates would see that I like getting on the snail and I want to win that way. Mm-hmm. So one of them would convert into one of the sword wielding worker bees and protect me until I could ride because the queen would be coming after me as well as their warriors. Mm-hmm. And then so they would protect me and def- and the queen would defend me when they noticed that that's what I'm trying to do uh, until I could get the snail over there. So I had a lot of fun with it. I went in there from not knowing what the fuck it was. Being, it looked like I thought from the like pixel art and everything, I thought it was going to be some platformer, like you know, pixel something that's dime a dozen, mm-hmm. you know. And I ended up being very. And when I found out, I'm like, oh, we're playing a, like a essentially a fucking sports ball game, like like we're trying to win <laughs> the game. I was just on we're on teams. I was just like, this is very unexpected. Mm-hmm. And then I played it for quite a few rounds. It's a cool game where like. There is a uh, tutorial mode where you can just try to play. I just advise, unfortunately for the team, for people who are in a pug where they just are like, you're going to have a noob on there. But I really do advise uh, against just jumping into a fucking quick, uh, free to, don't go in comp- competitive mode and be that guy because there, <laughs> there is a comp mode. Um, but hop in into like a free game, a free, you know, free to play or, or, or exhibition mode and just jump into a game and you'll really, unless you're just, very confused easily mm-hmm. you'll get the concept and stuff and with this preemptive explanation obviously you'll have the advantage you know because i went in there 
hundred percent blind. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. it is a lot of fun. Like honestly, I do want to push that game, and if it can go on a sale or like I said, I think it's worth all twenty bucks, mm-hmm. uh, especially because the uh, developers, um, which I do apologize, I forgot their name, but they uh did say that they are going to be so, since it is a, a a thing with like a sports like element or a competitive element to it. They do mm-hmm. plan on supporting it, especially if it gets the support they'd like to see. Okay. They will support the game accordingly, and um, I think it deserves it. It's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. It's, it's on Switch and PC right now. With an Xbox port confirmed, no mm. PS4 status at the moment. So, uh, mm. uh, to be announced for Xbox date-wise, <laughs> but confirmed <laughs> to be on Xbox, and out now on Switch and Steam. So, and what's the name of it again? Um, Killer Queen Black. Killer and it's a lot of fun, and I uh, definitely want to get some friends in on that, and it's like, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a good time. Mm-hmm. And the coolest part about it is it has a really badass metal soundtrack, but when I say... A metal soundtrack, I mean, like, sounds like some actual heavy metal shit I listen to. And for what anyone knows what that means is, I don't listen to, like, butt rock metal, like what 99% of video game soundtracks are. Even the really, even some really good, like, Japanese ones is just kind of just butt rock. This is, like, almost, dare I say, Iced Earth-esque, like instrumentals and stuff oh, wow. like that of like really cool metal like like Ooh. not just but like like you know like really cool like solos and all this stuff written and just like really badass and i'm just like soundtrack itself totally worth and um it's a lot of fun the rounds can go by pretty quick you can go five ten minute games like depending on how well your team works how good the defense of the other team is and go yeah. on for a while but it's a lot of fun. Nice. So definitely uh, pick that up. I banged on enough about it. You guys can watch the video if you want to see any footage from it. I kept it short because I just feel like it's, again, it also is kind of a sports ball thing. So it's kind of the same thing over mm-hmm. and over again. It's more of a more fun to play than watch yeah. type thing. So yeah. check it out. And that was my week. Uh, before we get into the uh, actual news, I just do want to say that uh, we should do our plugs, which means that Mr. Josh, where can everyone find you before we get into the news? Uh, it's on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash shiroplay5, uh, Instagram and Twitter at joshirojostar. Miss Mallory? Uh, you can find me at Instagram at awesome underscore Mally. I got that right again. <laughs> Yay me. That's two weeks in a row. There you go. Um, and that's about it for right now. All we'll right. And if... And if you want to hear me bang on more about those type of games or <laughs> see the first impression stuff and then hear about it again when the podcast comes around, uh, make sure to check everything out at slimasianentertainment.com or the podcast at disconnectedcast.com. So there's that. Uh, social media, ZD Rocker, everywhere, basically. There's, that's a whole thing. There's only been a couple of times I didn't get that handle, uh, but it is an odd handle, so <laughs> not common. So thankfully, I've been able to catch it more uh, not too many people nesting on those. See, yeah. that is the nice thing about having quite an unorthodox one is I don't have to. I, I pretty much usually am the first to get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that. All right. So uh, no sponsors this week. So we're just going to get into the news. Uh, I think I, if I did say we were going to have sponsors, my bad. We don't have sponsors this week. I lied. Um, we have... Oh, something that just dropped today, which was the Goose from Untitled Goose Game has been modded into Resident Evil 2 Remake. Nice. And there is a <laughs> high-res... It's Mr. X, for those who are wondering. Mr. X is now Untitled Goose Game Goose. And uh, he's a scary motherfucker still. And he's quite the asshole, just like Mr. X really is, and so is the Goose. It actually works surprisingly well. The uh, 3D model they use is rendered so well where it totally is that particular... Like, everyone just say, oh, it's just a goose. Like, no, it really looks like it jumped out of that game and went into Resident <laughs> Evil. It's amazing. And then the honk is there, and you hear it coming, and it's just fucking scary still. I think Mr. X is scary as fuck, so those segments really give me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'm so looking it up you're right You're looking now. at it right now. Yeah, it's pretty great. So, yeah, goose, oh the goose is loose in Resident Evil 2. So you can, uh, if you're playing on <laughs> PC, you can go ahead and get that mod in there. Has anyone here, other than me, played Resident Evil 2 Remake yet? I have not. I haven't, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it yet. It is fucking, oh my god, it is amazing. Now, normally, uh, like with Resident Evil 1 Remake, I got mad at everyone for just going into Mr. Casual controls instead of doing it proper with tank controls, Uh, but this is one where it was pretty different enough where I can forgive, like, because the gameplay was kind of changed quite a bit, Mm -hmm. but I didn't get annoyed 
or offended by it being different in that sense. So it's really cool. I would honestly argue that it, other than the narrative familiarity of it and the location uh, familiarity of it, it's pretty much its own proper Resident Evil game, I'd say. Is now, it, it is running on the and the Resident Evil or Biohazard Engine, whatever the fuck they call it, that Resident Evil 7 and Devil May Cry mm-hmm. 5 both run on. That is the same engine, DMC 5 and uh, Resident Evil 7, and as well as uh, Resident Evil 2. It's a very good engine. It doesn't have uh, texture load-in problems like Unreal or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it's, it's a good engine. I'm glad that Capcom is utilizing that. Uh, I don't think Monster Hunter is running on that engine. I think that's on its own. But... It's a good engine. So okay. I'm really, really happy that Capcom has hit their stride with it. And as I was talking to some of my friends in Discord, I am really glad that, especially here in 2019 and 2018 as well, that Capcom has really come back with a vengeance. Like, they were... I would confidently say, after DMC4 to now, with the exception of the Monster Hunter releases, which was made by a separate team, I would say they are... Uh, they were shit between 2000... 9 to 2018, I would say Capcom pretty much just released a bunch of nonsense. So, And I and I stand by that in terms of I am, don't think that's hyperbolic to say. With the exception of the Monster Hunter releases, I would say that most of Capcom's shit was bad. Uh, but yeah. they are, they they did drop the Capcom for almost a decade, but now I would say they're fucking back to being Cap God because their releases lately have been solid. Monster Hunter World mm-hmm. knocked it out of the park, which is... Yeah. It's crazy to think that on a pound-for-pound pound sales number-to-time ratio, Monster Hunter World now is the best-selling Capcom game. Um, so that is amazing. Because Capcom obviously has a lot of fucking killer ones under their belt. But again, on a time-of-existence sales-to-release uh, ratio, Monster Hunter World is the best-selling Capcom game now. So nice. that's good. And then, of course, DMC5 was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is great. So it's nice to see them fucking back in their element. Whoever has been fired or hired since this has happened, <laughs> please keep keep them on. Because keep this is great. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, now, yeah, it's speaking been a of, pretty good year for Capcom. It has, it has. <laughs> um, now, DMC5 and uh, Monster Hunter World. Uh, Josh, I know we've gotten on to Monster Hunter World, obviously. I actually haven't got to DMC5. Have you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I at least was able to do one playthrough of DMC5 awesome. before I ended up losing my save data. Oh no, <laughs> oh. that sucks. Yeah, I had to replay it, which is um, fine, which is a good, good game. Good game, right? Good yeah. game. Um, oh yeah. Now, where would you hold it? Because DMC kind of has a very... Uh, ups Possibly and, the best uh, one. <laughs> okay, that, and that's what I've heard from pretty much everybody, is that this is probably the B- best DMC game. Like... Yeah. Pretty like pretty hard to argue otherwise. Mm-hmm. So that's great. That's great to hear. That is awesome. Mallory, any uh your experience with Devil May Cry? Uh I haven't gotten to play very I haven't played very many of them. Okay. I think I played probably the first one, but my friend was uh playing it and I was watching him play it. Nice. Um and I think the only thing that made me mad in Devil May Cry is uh-huh. the fact that you could see other people playing but you couldn't play with them. Does that make sense? Is that the that's the one I'm thinking of, right? Yeah. Devil May Cry. Where you got to like yeah, there's certain scenes where you can see there other... is going to be somebody else online playing, but you're not really playing together. They're yeah. just kind of doing their own thing, and then at the end you can rate them, but nobody ever rates you stylish because they're all assholes. Yeah. yeah, Josh and I had that co- joking conversation before about how no one rates anybody on there. Yeah. It's just like fuck you, I was fuck like, what's you. The point of being able to see them <laughs> then, like. I was like, can you wave at them? And he's like, no, you don't interact with them at all. And I was like, that is, that is terrible. That's weird, yeah. <laughs> That's so that weird. Just, that just makes me think of that scene, Josh, from DMC Devil May Cry. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's such a bad scene when I watched that the other day. Oh, my God, so cringy. Uh, the, <laughs> DMC Devil May Cry is still, uh, I don't want to get in on that. But um, continue with Capcom talk, possibly Capcom-related talk. Um... Ikumi Nakamura, uh, famed uh, cutie, who, like, she's been with Platinum for forever, but everyone now has become aware of who she is since the last E3 with the Tokyo Ghostwire presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, Mr. Blocks Everyone on Twitter himself, Hideki Kamiya, 
um, both did a joint tweet, took a photo together, did a joint tweet saying that Okami 2 is at some point with an unannounced uh, studio publisher uh, and um, I believe unannounced publisher as far as I know, uh, an unknown date. Um, so we'll see. Uh, obviously, because it's Kamiya and Nakamura, we're thinking probably Platinum. But Kamiya and um, what's his name, the guy that did Evil Within and did Resident Evil, the Resident Evil, uh, uh, fucking, uh, oh my god. Anyways, uh, yeah, that guy. Uh, I think you're talking about, but I, yeah, I don't know the name offhand. Yeah, he he's obviously obvi- uh, from Platinum as well, but Evil Within was obviously not a Platinum game, so. Just because uh, Nakamura and uh, Kamiya are involved doesn't necessarily mean Platinum, but it is Okami, so probably Platinum, because <laughs> that was made by Platinum when they were still known as Clover under Capcom, so I'd be very surprised if they didn't get Platinum to go ahead and just do what they do best. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, very high chance that we will see Platinum working on Okami 2, probably going to be published by Capcom, because I'd imagine Capcom still owns the license to Okami. So it'll be nice to see them working together again. And it, it's just a little funny to see the studio that Capcom axed uh, come back under their bankroll again as a mercenary. <laughs> we thought we killed you. I got better. Yeah. Uh, that's basically I'm what's back. happening there. Um, which, arguably, they did get better because during that shitty time period for Capcom, Platinum rose to fame and beyond. So. Yeah. Uh, there's that. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see. I love Okami. Again, the uh, brilliant game that I own like five or six copies of that I'll never play again. Um, so, because it's great, but it's aged. Yeah. So it'll be nice to see Okami again. See, you know, Ami back with more modern, maybe a more modernized uh, control scheme and everything. So it's uh, it's just aged. I mean, I have it on Switch and everything, and it's yeah. it's fine. It's just, it's just old. Yeah. <laughs> I love it to death, but it's just old. Um, but yeah, good mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, you guys both like Okami? I never got around to playing it, unfortunately. Oh, well, you know what, Josh? If you ever do have a spare 20 lying around and you want to pick up Okami, you definitely should. Miss Mallory? I didn't get to play it either. Alright, this was a very <laughs> fruitful conversation about Okami. <laughs> Uh, well, but yeah. since you talk about it so much, it's actually on my list good, of good, games good. to get. But so. please do. It is a really good game. It's a gorgeous game. And definitely worth at least a playthrough. Uh, at least, um, comparatively, you guys don't have much to yeah. compare controls to, so it won't bother you. Right. There's that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga the internet. not knowing what the Fortnite is. Yep. Turning Fortnite players into Melty Blood players. And uh, just... <laughs> So, from what, I, I, it's not like I deep dived into this, because it's not like this is like a crazy important news story, but if you guys know and I don't, um, was she just trolling, or was it her ignorance got blown out of proportion, and she was just genuinely curious? Because that was the week that Fortnite ended, and... All yeah. the Fortnite players freaked out. So, do you think she just saw it on Twitter trending and said, what the fuck is that? Or do you think she was just like, lol, I don't care, it's popular, and I don't care about it. I'm going to troll everyone. Yeah, I, mean, I really hope it was genuine. Yeah. That'd be fucking hilarious. Like... Especially with the interaction with Ninja. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> who are you? It's like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's scary. Although just the reaction to that it was hilarious itself because everybody on Twitter was like, oh, Ninja wants... Now Ninja wants to play with girls? What? Got him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, that was a good one. Um, I, guess his, I guess his wife gave him permission since it's Lady Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy to think, and, and, and I, I didn't, like I said, it's not like I fucking poured resources into researching this story, but it's crazy to think that there probably are more people who watch Ninja than those who listen to Lady Gaga. And Lady Gaga is a very popular artist. I'm not saying she's not, I'm just saying Fortnite. Like... Mm-hmm. I think it's probably safe to say more people in today's society, especially among millennials, probably know Ninja more than people who know Lady Gaga. Especially because Lady Gaga has kind of like stepped out of the limelight in terms of mainstream media. Like she's on Broadway yeah. and she's on like, yeah. she's still doing her like, thing, but... Oh yeah, like she's still popular, you still see stuff about her, but 
Yeah, like, she's not as big in the spotlight as, as she used to be. So, and because of that, I would say there's probably more people who play and watch Fortnite shit than listen to Lady Gaga on Earth at the moment. So, um, I would say that that's a safe statement. And I just think that blows my mind, because we remember her being that, mm-hmm. like, she was the diva, like, she was the pop star for a while. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. I remember, I, I, at first I just didn't care. Like, her music was okay, I guess. And I guess I, at first I just didn't care. But the thing that made me gain respect for her was learning that she is a genuinely good uh, musician. Mm-hmm. Um... And also her love for heavy metal. Like, when I found out she loves Iron Maiden and that she goes to their shows and actually supports them and has actually met them and has kind of made, uh, you know, rubbed elbows with them where they know who she is now and know that she's a big fan of theirs. Um, she even helped Rhodey at one of their UK shows. Um, it's cool to know that she's just, she is really down to earth. Yeah. And her stepping away from the limelight to do activist stuff and go on Broadway just, you know, fueled my respect for her more. And I think that it is possible to... In- joy and respect an artist even if you don't regularly recreationally listen to her music yeah. and she is one of those people that i definitely do recognize and highly respect as an artist because she's she's cool she's also been working uh, on other projects as well i i do think it's a genuine uh like confusion of what the, of what Fortnite was because I don't think she keeps up with that. Exactly, know? she's not a gamer. Yeah, and she is probably. I think it was genuine. I think it was yeah. a what the fuck is Fortnite like? And she didn't spell it she's wrong. Played Bayonetta which, though. It, we know that. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> we and you know what's funny is that her misspelling Fortnite mm-hmm. also is hard to tell whether it was a purpose troll or genuine confusion. It, the whole execution of it is either an amazing troll. Or just, or just a, a not gamer just wondering yeah. what the fuck is happening. Mm-hmm. Because that week Fortnite was hella trending because yeah. everyone was kids were destroying their parents' cars and starting wildfires because okay I'm exaggerating it was TVs <laughs> it was TVs they were breaking down and someone's gonna be like no one needed cars who knows but all I know is children were freaking out TVs were getting broken and parents were trying to sue Epic it was quite the week. All, All because no one knows on what a prank is. Yeah. Now my Fuck nephew's on internet. Fortnite. He's been asking me to play with him. I'm like, no, I won't <laughs> do it. No matter Here's how cute thing. you are, Here's the not thing. playing Fortnite. I genuinely gave it a crack. Yeah. I have it down. It's in my. I can't erase it now. It's in my download history on Nintendo Switch. I just have to out myself that I tried it. I tried it in beta on PS4 first. Then I tried it on Switch. Because I was like, maybe I just am not putting enough time into it. It still sucks. Like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's still not my jam. <laughs> that was not an objective criticism. It was. It, it's just not my thing. I just, I really don't get it. I don't get it. Um, and I think that it's just a fair thing for me to say that. Yeah. And I don't gate my age behind it. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Although I will say that no one I know around my age group does get it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, but whatever it is, they hit the magic formula of money. Oh, 10 cent. That's what it is. Well, that's what the magic formula for money is 10 cent. <laughs> so there's that. But on top of that, uh, it's massively successful. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously I think it does have a lot to do with the free to play element of it. But you know, congrats to them. We can't stop them. Yeah. Have fun doing yeah. what you do. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know. How I wouldn't it. say it's a bad game either, from what I play. It's not. I just don't get it. Like that's why when I said sucks, I laughed because I was just being extremely fucking just an asshole. Like, like I like but, the PVE on there. I just I don't get the battle role yet. That's the other but, interesting like, thing, right? Is yeah, how different. It's amazing how different that game was mm-hmm. gonna be. It started as like a fucking PVE zombie survival co op shooter. Yeah. And then. What the fuck ever it is now. Is- Minecraft gun bang. I don't know. <laughs> so, whatever it is. Um, speaking yeah, of- I still remember seeing like one of the first trailers for it. It was that little cinematic thing where like there, there's that family yeah. in trouble at some well, I guess, and, Burger and, King or something <laughs> like that. And, and, and you know it's amazing. I was amazing. like, oh, this looks neat. And then I find out, like, wait, wait hold up. That's now, the, that's now this? What? Yeah, and you know what's amazing is, you know the whole Cliffy B story of it, right? Like, what happened with Cliffy B in Fortnite? Mm-mm. So, I don't know if I know too much about it. Okay, so Cliffy B was obviously big man at Epic and uh, Unreal and obviously <laughs> the mind behind Gears of War and all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh... Cliffy was involved in Fortnite when it was what we originally saw it as. 
Um, then the development cycle started going more towards what it became now, and Cliffy B was like, that's stupid. I'm out of this bitch. That's not going to make any money. I'd rather not be a broke ass, and yeah. I'm out of the studio. The studio's dumb. That is a dumb game, and fuck you guys, I'm out. Cliffy B, out! And uh, then he <laughs> missed out on billions of dollars because he is one of the boss men, so he would have had a huge revenue cut yeah. in uh, Fortnite. And ever since then, he's made two failed battle royales Oof. that basically just tried to become Fortnite. He made Lawbreakers, and he made some other piece of shit no one cares about. And um, he, the only thing Cliffy B has done of relevance in the last... Uh, years since he's less epic is get into a big fight with Pat from Castle Super Beast. <laughs> that is legitimately hmm. the only famous thing that's happened where like basically when Cliffy B was being a big asshole with lawbreakers, just like dogging Fortnite and trying to push it as this thing and lying about a lot of the development stuff, Pat basically called him out on his bullshit. Uh be- because basically what Cliffy B ended up doing is he just dissolved his studio and fired everybody. But what ended up, where he fell into the thing is he just started lying, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, basically, he started talking about the severance packages he gave out, and that although he dissolved the studio, at least he took care of his people. Then a bunch of people that were part of his studio spoke up and said, uh, severance package? Uh, I, I didn't get that. Uh, and then a bunch of those spoke out, and his response to that is, well, I'd like to think I took care of my people. <laughs> And Pat basically called him out and said, that's not how money or life or reality works. Yeah. And Cliff was basically like, I'm Cliffy B, who are you? And then Pat was just like, it doesn't really matter who I am. And then they just went back and forth. And what ended up happening is Pat's tweets and retweets were getting like 10 times more responses than Cliffy B. And then Pat's follower base started like growing massively while he's fighting with Cliffy B, where Cliffy B started shrinking and then <laughs> Cliffy B basically is like, fuck the games industry, man, I'm retiring. So basically, Pat made Cliffy B retire, and at this point, Cliffy B hasn't really worked on anything, so we don't know what's actually going on with Cliffy B. Uh, the only other douchey thing he did during this whole exchange of just getting destroyed by Pat on, on Twitter was um, he went to, uh, after all the controversy of like fucking up his relationship when, and fucking all these people out of jobs. Mm-hmm. He went, attended an ex-employee's wedding of one of the many people he didn't uh, um, pay severance for and, and took awkward photos with people there and was just like, see, I care about my people. I attended this guy's wedding. And I don't even know if he was really invited. <laughs> oh, that's weird. So Cliffy B is just this weird, like, obscure hermit now. Oh. But he made Gears of War at one point, so good for him. Okay, well, good for him. Um... So that's Cliffy B's story now, and that's what his involvement in Fortnite is. So basically, ever since he made the mistake of jumping off the Fortnite ship, he has just fallen into the darkness ever since then, because he just got annihilated by Pat on social media and had two games fail severely and had to close down the studio. Okay. Um, Now, the problem also with him closing down the studio is the fact that he probably had the money to keep it rolling, but then he realized if he cashed out and kept it all, he'd be fine. Yeah. And that's basically what happened. So Cliffy B is a bit of a scumbag. So, there's that. I think I'm going to email him and see if he's down to come on the podcast and see if he can, like, explain. No, no, okay. <laughs> I know this is a weird segue, but it made me, it, it got the gears grinding. Now, <laughs> H3 did this in their early days. H3's early guests were people they destroyed and dogged on. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying we destroyed them, but uh, did talk mess about and got them on and said, defend yourself. Yeah. We'd like to hear your side of the story. Some guests were mature and reacted weird. Some guests lied. Some guests eh, differently. But I think that's an interesting concept. So I think I will shoot Cliffy B an email and I'll tell him, look, I'll be honest with you, man. We dogged on you. Or I dogged on you. I did. I'll take all the responsibility for that. I dogged on you. But I do want to hear your side of the story. Yeah. Maybe I'm what missing happened? a puzzle piece. He'll probably just tell me, <laughs> fuck me. Fuck you. Who are you? Because he yeah. told that to Pat. So he's probably going to tell me the same shit or he won't even respond. But if Cliffy B hears this or if he gets my email, open invitation, I I will give you a ground, maybe even an episode exclusively for you because it's been a while since we did a special cast, Mm -hmm. for you to defend yourself, Doug. We may not be the biggest platform, but that's still like two to 300 people a month that you may reach and maybe they just need to hear your side of the story and would want to support you in your future endeavors because money runs out. I know you're wealthy right now, but who knows? Maybe you might need to make another game. Who knows? Maybe you can kind of explain your what we see now as ill-fitted behavior. 
Maybe. If he does send you a fuck you email, um, I will definitely. I, I'll frame just that post for it you. on social media. Well, I'll just so. frame it for you. There you that go. way we can have it up on behind the And then I'm going to tweet that out, and yeah. then we'll see what happens. Or maybe that'll yeah, be I'll our just be a nice point. laugh. So there's that. So Lady Gaga on Fortnite, that happened. Yep, that happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Final Fantasy fourteen is getting New Game Plus. That's right. So, what people are going to do is they're going to go, wait, wait, Final Fantasy fourteen Isn't that the online? Yeah, it is the online but, one. But yeah, it is the online one. Oh, okay. So, I had to, re- uh, had to reread that <laughs> subject line a few times. No, Final Fantasy fourteen is getting a New Game Plus. So, what that entails is it won't erase your current character's progress. Okay. But they're adding that so you can re-experience the story content because a lot of content's come out since then. So mm-hmm. basically what it allows you to do is start over again and re-experience um, uh, the story content of the thing again. Uh, you will not get quest mm-hmm. rewards. It's primarily a way to re-experience the narrative and upgrade other job uh, classes that you didn't get the chance to work on and make it a little more streamlined uh, and less repetitive way uh, to try to level up job other jobs that you didn't at the moment without just, you know, okay. doing your stuff. So I thought that was interesting. Oh, that'll be cool. I just thought it was funny to hear New Game Plus in an MMO because as far yeah. as I can recall, I've never heard of that shit before. It may yeah. have been done. It may have been done, but I've never heard of it before. So that's coming soon. So if you're a big old Final Fantasy fourteen guy, you know... Pat makes it sound so cool over the last few years. I've really wanted to get into Final Fantasy XIV for the last few years, pretty much since it relaunched. Mm-hmm. But MMOs, man, I just don't have time. I'm really sad. It looks so cool, and I've heard great stories about fourteen. But Josh, when was the last time you were really in fourteen? Oh, it's been a few years, man. Okay, so it's been a few years. It's been a few years, yeah. I mean, I currently still have an active subscription, only just to keep like the house up <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> you can't you don't want to lose the house but uh, i haven't really had too much time to go in there and play it again like i, I really want to because i heard i heard the story and it is really good yeah absolutely i've heard great but, things great things yeah but mm, just haven't uh gotten too much time to play it it also doesn't help that my main character is in a really busy server so Sometimes I have to wait a bit before I can actually get in there. When you were playing, did you have a consistent group? Uh, fairly consistently. There was one friend that I would play with, um, and then she and I would pretty much just find people to help us out. Okay, so, stuff, so so basically, I, I did have at least team. one person. To play. Okay. That, and that's always, sometimes that's all it takes. May, honestly, bro, maybe one of these days when we figure shit out, when you move uh, in, maybe I could finally dive into 14 and then you can dive back into 14 and who knows, man. <laughs> honestly, it's something I wouldn't mind because I've heard so much cool shit. I kind of want to get in there. I know it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, it's a fucking MMO that's however many years old. That's a lot of fucking intimidation to jump into that, but who knows? I've heard it's awesome, so yeah. fuck it. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to try that out. I've heard good stuff. So New Game Plus, interesting concept. And also nice to see that it's also a functional concept. Because there probably are mm-hmm. people who kind of want to re-experience the story again. And there probably are people who want a more uh, streamlined, entertaining way to level up another job. Yeah. So at least there's that. Uh, now, that's a game that's probably going to be alive for quite a while. Uh, games that are about to fall right into the grave. We have Fallout 76 on the docket. Uh, Fallout 76 announcing that their NPC, their big NPC update, where they finally were like, oh, people played the Fallout games for the story and NPCs and not the broken jank gameplay? Oh, that's weird. We didn't know this. So they did announce a few months ago that they were going to add this. Uh, They have now recently announced that it's being delayed uh, sometime in 2020. Um, What does this look like? This looks like Anthem essentially delaying the roadmap Mm -hmm. indefinitely and then canceling it. Um, I basically think this is Bethesda's same fashion of being like, if anyone is still playing this shit in 2020, it's coming. We'll give you something. But I think, honestly, this is what they're just trying to see is who the fuck's still playing. Because as far as I know, I don't think anyone's playing Fallout 76 anymore. Especially without this update. Mm. Because honestly, Fallout is objectively not the like deepest gameplay mechanic-wise game. So it really was the stories and the NPCs mm-hmm. that made it fun. Yeah. So the fact that Fallout 76 was essentially a game minus that is stupid. Yeah. And it was broken as fuck when it came out too. So there's that. Unlike Anthem, which was at least mechanically sound and just had no content... Fallout 76 had no... Con- doubled down and had no content yeah. and was broken. Uh, 
the only saving grace was that Anthem came out after them, so everyone just got so focused on a fucked up Anthem got really quickly, despite the fact that it was more mechanically sound, so that's that's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's an update called Wastelanders that may or may not come. It's going to add all sorts of random events, uh, you know, all sorts of cool NPCs that you can interact with around the Wasteland, um, maybe, probably, if it comes. So there's that. Um uh, what was I going to say? Oh, shit. Oh, no. I got lost in my notes. Oh, no. Oh, right. Um, faction. It's going to add factions and all that stuff, alignments. And this is the problem, is I'm really worried that this is basically going to turn Fallout 76 into what should have just been another spin-off Fallout, a Fallout mm-hmm. 4 spin-off. Like, New Vegas is 2-3, what this should have, like, Fallout 76 should have been to Fallout 4 as a yeah. spin-off companion piece in between that and Fallout 5. Um, because if the NPCs are coherent, decently voice acted, and if they end up adding a cool narrative and cool factions, I'll just be really disappointed that it's a fucking, uh, online, uh, live service nonsense mess instead of a spin-off Fallout game. Yeah. Because unlike a lot of people who hated Fallout 4, I thought it was fine. Yeah. Like, Fallout 4 was fine. Watch my brother. I, d- I didn't get yeah. that, I didn't get that far into the, like, the weird building mechanic nonsense, but the game itself was alright. Yeah. I don't know, I just... I get what they're coming from, but I think people who are mad at the streamlined menus and stuff like that, like, I, is it really that big of a deal? I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm just not a big MM, I mean, I'm, I'm just not a big RPG nut like some people. Maybe for the people, I mean, I like RPGs, and that's actually probably my favorite genre of them, mm-hmm. but I guess I'm just not, like, that hardcore into, like, I give a fuck <laughs> how how detailed or undetailed or whatever the fucking complaint was that the fucking uh, dialogue was. Uh, as, uh... In, in, in incoherently angry, I I guess. I guess. That was yeah. yeah, I think that was the bitchiness is that it was just like so vague what the response was and sometimes you got a response that was like not exactly what you wanted, but I I mean unless it got me killed or ruined an alliance with me, I'm not that into it to be like yeah. maybe those people are just it's, really into the narrative. I definitely understand the the criticism for it because <laughs> it is supposed to be a role playing game. Yeah, yeah. And when you have Sessions, oh, it's yeah, much yeah. more restricting, <laughs> you know, than like previous games where you have like, you know, like in New Vegas, you could have so many different options mm-hmm. for certain things. So I, I get the criticism for sure. Um, and then you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to follow up on New Vegas. It is, and that's kind of been the big problem, right? Is because. After yeah. New Vegas, Obsidian went ahead and even though it took a Kickstarter and quite a bit of time, Pillars of Eternity dropped this fantastic. Obsidian has just shown time and time again that they can make not just a mechanically sound game, but an awesome story, man. Like Fallout New Vegas, the narrative, the characters, the factions, so deep. And then Pillars of Eternity, like, you know, all they did was take the Baldur's Gate formula, because they were big fans of the fucking D&D and Baldur's Gate games, and did their own version of it, and without ripping it off at all, despite being very similar, you know, top-down RPG shit, God, the stories are so good. You're going around in a really fucked-up world where every choice is essentially a fucked-up choice, and you basically choose the lesser of two evils, and the whole game runs on these moral decisions and just so well-written. So it's really nice. Mm-hmm. I really, bro. I really suggest if you ever, if you haven't already played Pillars of Eternity, I think you should, man. It's a. I don't know how into like the old Baldur's Gate games you were, where you know you're dragging a couple of characters and moving them here and then uh, selecting this. <laughs> I've actually yeah. never played one. Okay, so it's not a bad one. It has no uh, ties to anything in terms of you have to play supplementary ahead of time. And then B, yeah. it's a it's a very uh, well put Baldur's like. Uh, I'm just gonna turn everything into a like. But okay. that's the thing. We're into like that that portion of the world now where purely original games just don't really exist anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah. it's a really it's a really well done Baldur's like t- style game. And I think when you get into some of those stories, man, and then you get like. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it, and I'd love to, like, discuss that. But Pillars of Eternity, good old Obsidian game, and Pillars of Eternity 2 did very good, so it's nice to see. I also don't mind them turning to Quickstarter each time, because they've proven two times already with two successful Kickstarters that they promise, they deliver on their promise, and then on top of that... They also don't take too long considering that they're an independent team like that mm-hmm. now with Obsidian. That it's good stuff. And of course, they have what Outer Worlds coming out. Mm-hmm. 
So mm-hmm. it's going to be great too. I wish there was a switch I'm port so of that. I'm so excited for that. I, I wish there was a switch port of that, but they said at the moment they have no intention to put it on switch because it's just too massive. Yeah. But if you're going to play it on PC, you're going to have to pick it up on Epic Games for the first year, or you can pick it up on PS4 and Xbox One. For those of you on Xbox One, it's when that Play Pass comes into beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. use because it is going to be part of the Game Play Pass. That's so if you're already a subscription to that, there are so many good games on there that are just worth getting that 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 pass for. It is so it's such a good idea. Yeah, it is. PlayStation could really use that also, but maybe they couldn't because they're leading in sales by a lot. Maybe that's why they don't do it. But <laughs> it's a cool way to get like Outer Worlds, Outer Wilds, as well as a bunch of other AAA titles that were through Xbox are all available on the Game Pass, which is not a sponsor of this. I'm just thinking it's a cool thing. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, that really bad uh, No More Heroes uh, spinoff game that was on Switch has been ported to PS4 and PC, because why? It's such a bad game. Like, I love the No More Heroes franchise, but it's one of those things where they did a spinoff game that is just clunky and is not fun. So I was very surprised that they ported it to PS4 and PC. The only thing I can think of is that they were contractually obligated to. Mm -hmm. All I can think is Grasshopper Studios was told, hey, once the the Switch exclusivity runs out, you have to port it to these. And they were just like, you guys still wanted this, right? And PlayStation and, and PC were like, oh, fuck. Oh, we forgot about the deal we made with them. Shit, this game's on our platform now. I guess, get it, keep it coming. But... With No More Heroes 3 coming out, it'll be fine. And that is confirmed to be on Switch as well. So, uh, they'll make up for it. Suda51 doesn't make too many clunkers. And I get what he was trying to do with it. Um, For those who haven't played um, Travis Strikes Back, it's basically... It is a No More Heroes spinoff. But it sounds like a cool idea at first, where as you go through the different levels... You have different play styles. Uh, platformer. Then the next one's a top-down mm-hmm. shooter. Then the next one is like this weird arcade thing. Mm-hmm. But they're all bad versions on those gameplay styles and very, very cumbersome and not fun version. It should have been cool because each level was a new genre of um, art uh, of, of type of game we've played before. We'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, I get this. This is that Muso level. This is the <laughs> arcade level. This is the platform level. This is the shooter level. It was a cool concept, but fuck, it came out bad. I just, it's a shame. I was really excited for it and then very disappointed mm-hmm. by it. But No More Heroes is a great franchise. For those who have not played No More Heroes 1 and 2, definitely do. I think there's a remastered either out already or coming, so... Definitely pick up those games. Uh, have you guys played the No More Heroes I know Heroes games? there's part two on the Switch. I don't know if they did a remastered of it. Yeah, and I don't know yet. But if you guys haven't yet, yeah, definitely pick it up. Have you guys done much of the No More Heroes franchise? Mm-mm. No More Heroes and Killers <laughs> Dead, both good stuff. This is going to be the uh, the episode of me just going on about things, but it was relevant yeah, to the that came we out. Haven't just, we <laughs> so. nah. It was just, yeah, it was like that one Switch uh, week where they announced a bunch of stuff for me. This is just news related to stuff I played, but also actually, ironically, not in a good light for some of it. Yeah, uh, my, my girlfriend really likes No More Heroes. So. Yeah, I remember, yeah, she, uh, uh, she and I talked a bit when we went to Bucky's that one time about a few mm-hmm. of the Suda 51 games of Grasshopper Studio. So that was really cool and sweary. So, it, yeah, no, it's yeah. definitely cool. She's checked out uh, those games, so that, that's really cool. Uh, again, it just comes down to that obscure taste. It's not even hipster; just it's its own subset of like does really well. Well, I mean, it was it was on the Wii. That's so like very niche. It like, is very niche, right from the get go. Absolutely. Um, so there's that. Uh, League of Legends, of course, just conf- we talked. Oh, I think we talked about this last time. Mm-hmm. Project L. But the reason I talked about it is they they supplemented. I saw supplemental news on that about it. Them also apparently working on an F, uh, Riot apparently working on an FPS as well as a CG animated series. Now, huh. I don't know about the FPS thing, but what I will say about Project L, as it's called at the moment, and a CG show is that I really like the League characters. I just don't. I just can't get into League because of the community. Not. Mm-hmm. I think that a fighting game using League characters and a CG show. Using lead characters, maybe just what I'm, what I needed, because, again, I like those characters, so I'd like to see where it develops to. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what type of fighting game they go with, 
And then it'll also be interesting to see how the show would end up. But Mm -hmm. I'm down for that. I think that League's animations were some of the stuff I really look forward to, even after falling out of love of that game a long time ago. Uh, So, I don't know. I like the character designs, and I like the characters. So, I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, Josh, on your end, I feel that if any of us have heard any news about it at all, any whispers or inklings, have you heard any details whatsoever about Project L? Uh, not, not too much. I haven't really gotten out of my way to look into it, but I have been seeing some stuff on Twitter that seems to be suggesting that some people in the FGC, um, you know, cause just knowing how big the prize pools for League of Legends can be, yeah. um, they're kind of, some people are stating that they're probably going to try to really just drop everything into vote their time to the League of Legends fighting game if that happens, you know, Uh for that esports check, so then now there's kind of this whole, like, you know, well, you know, that kind of sucks, like, you know, if you play fighting games, you should play them because you enjoy them, like, you know, what if it's it's not even that good? I agree. Things like that, but that's just stuff that I've seen, I haven't really, like, seen the actual meat of it, yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'm very curious. For me, the uh, announcements and uh, videos I want to see is the ones that finally reveal whether it's like a Tekken-style 3D fighter uh, or if it's going to be like a Hyper Fighter mm-hmm. or something, or maybe like Street Fighter 4 or something like mm-hmm. that. So, um, yeah. it'd be interesting. I'm very curious to see what type of fighting. Cause that's the thing. A lot of people who aren't into fighting games, even on like the casual dabbling that I do, are even less removed from it than that, don't realize how many different types of fighting games there are that play yeah. mechanically quite different. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you have your NRS games, you have your Tekken, so it's, it's interesting. Because, you know, from the outside looking in, people just kind of see, oh, at the, for the most part, two people duking it out. But they don't understand what's happening behind the curtain. So, I don't know, it's interesting. I'd be very curious to see what... Uh, what what Riot does with that. Um, what, uh, yeah, that's it for that, I think. Unless then y'all had any more comments on that. I was, I was going to drone on about something, but I realized I don't want to bang on about that. No. That's it? You guys good to that? All right, cool. <laughs> so, uh, the PS Vita re- received a uh, stability fix update. I don't, I, I don't know why. I don't know if anyone still plays Vita. But one thing I will give it from... <laughs> From my short time with the Vita, I did have one, and I did enjoy it, because I thought it was a pretty cool idea. The PS, but that's the thing, right, is that PlayStation has made some cool handhelds. Mm -hmm. The PSP was a great idea. The Vita was a great idea. The biggest problems that Sony runs into every time they try a handheld, and it's why I don't think they're going to try again for a while, because two commercial trash fires in a row is just painful, um, Mm -hmm. is... Lack of games that most people give a fuck about, because unless you're an anime guy, those pretty much have nothing for you. There are no real ports, there are no real anything other than, like, all I played on it was Crisis Core, Danganronpa, a bunch of Japanese shit. Mm-hmm. Mon P, Monster Mon Piece. Unless you give a fuck about, if you don't know what Criminal Girls Invite Only is, you probably have never owned a, a Vita or a PSP. Um... That being said, they also both suffered because they weren't marketed very well either. You really didn't see many PSP or Vita commercials the same way that you see Nintendo shit advertised. Yeah. Um, and on yeah, top I of that... Yeah, I actually got confused as to what the Vita was when it came out. Exactly. And on top of that, speaking of Nintendo, you're fighting the Nintendo. The PSP... And went against the fucking Game Boy Advance, which is, like, one of the coolest consoles ever. Yeah. And then the Vita went against the fucking DS slash 3DS. Yeah. Rest in fucking peace, man. Like, with with bad promotions, no games, and then, uh, and you're going against these, like, the kings of handheld? It just wasn't gonna happen, mate. Like, it just mm-hmm. really wasn't. Um, which is a shame, because, again... Uh, having owned both of those, they were cool. They had the right idea, and they were um, aesthetically. I thought they looked cool, man. Like I thought that the there were some cool limited edition Vitas that I mean, excuse me, uh, PSPs that came out. And uh, as far as the Vita goes, that was a slick design. And finally, a handheld with twin thumbsticks. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, because, you know, you have the new 3DS, which added the nub, but then technically the Switch is the first technical handheld with finally with dual analog. Yeah. So, uh, Sony kind of had the right idea there where they were just like, they, they kind of dropped the ball with not having that on the PSP and then fixed it right away with their next one. Yeah. Unlike Nintendo, which took, again, until the Switch to finally have two proper, uh, <laughs> sticks. So... Good stuff. Again, I think Sony definitely deserves credit where credit is due yeah. because I would say the Switch probably took some notes uh, other than their usual stuff. Uh, I think that, you know, Nintendo probably, like the twin sticks, I think that Nintendo probably learned that from when they were just like, oh, wow, one of the few great receptions that the Vita had was having twin mm-hmm. sticks. So, uh, Josh uh, or Mallory, did you either of you guys have a PSP or Vita? <laughs> Uh, yeah. No. I told you guys, it's no cast. Yeah, yeah this is no. Just, like, just bring up everything that they've never done. Yeah, no, I mean, I've always <laughs> wanted one. <laughs> I always wanted one for certain games, but uh, never did. I-, I just remember borrowing a friend's for a while so I could play the uh, Final Fantasy Dissidia Duodecim. Hell yeah. Uh, which was all right. Cool. It's all right. <laughs> it's better than Dissidia on PS4, that's for sure. A lot of things are better than that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Miss Mallory? <laughs> no, I didn't have it. I know my friends had them, and they would play together. But, yeah, I pretty much just had Nintendo. I didn't really want the PS... I didn't want PS anything, except for my PS2 and my PS1. There you go. So there's that. And I swear I didn't, like... This is just all news <laughs> from this week. This, this was not... This was Josh not purposely, is only picking things that was, we haven't done. Yeah, ever. I'm, I'm just really bitter that I picked up a physical Switch game. That I, this is all <laughs> that now he's, that he's making us mad. But yeah, it's uh, mm-hmm. it, it's it's firmware 3.73, which means that it's been getting support still. So apparently, so that's the interesting thing too, actually, that I wanted to segue since we're talking about handhelds, and I just want to talk about how badass the Switch is. No, um, <laughs> anyways, the interesting thing because I was listening to an old episode of Super Best Friend Cast because it was still called that then, is that um. I've always heard about it, but then they went a little more in-depth in conversation about it, is that the reason Sony and Nintendo always focus a lot on handhelds or try handhelds or whatever, you know, you want to say about it, they have a lot of focus or research on handhelds, Mm -hmm. is because apparently in Japan, that's way bigger than fucking console gaming. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it also is why... A lot of Japanese games don't have a lot of twin stick shenanigans or looking up and down. They actually talk about that. That's why Pokemon will probably never have a, a free moving camera or anything uh-huh. like that. Is uh, apparently a lot of it has to do with preference, and then even some studies show that. Japanese gamers more than some other countries actually do seem to suffer from stuff that could be caused by looking around and being crazy with the uh, camera too much. Oh, wow. So, because of that, um, a lot of the games are made the way they are, and it's why you'll see Japanese kind of stick to that Mm -hmm. and not do free roaming cams as much, and then why handhelds is always being pushed by Nintendo and Sony, and why Microsoft still has yet to get into that game, because Microsoft's focus is more in the West, where mm. handheld gaming is very much big down <laughs> until the Switch, uh, the 3DS sales and all that stuff were not really paled in comparison to Japan. Yeah. Whereas with the Switch, finally, the numbers in in the West are pretty big. There's still no you know no Japan, mm-hmm. but Japanese love their mobile gaming, their handheld gaming, and I can just say now it must be because they're such a busy society. Because now that I'm a busy boy. I get it now. Mm -hmm. I also wasn't the biggest handheld guy. I was just like, I play everything on my PS4 or Xbox. Uh, And then there was a point where my 3DS just started to collect dust. Uh, And then the Switch came out and I was just like, handheld gaming is amazing. (laughs) Why did I ever put that down? Yeah, it came back to that. It it, it reinvigorated my love for those hours I spent on my Game Boy and then eventually my 3DS. So, yeah. Um so with with that, where do you guys fall in in the camps of like, are you guys more on your switches than anything else at the moment? Um, I guess the Josh Mallory type of turn based thing, but yeah, I know the answer Roll for, for Josh. I just speak for him. Yeah. Roll for podcast initiative. There we go. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been playing my Switch a lot more lately, mainly because because it is portable. I can just you know, if Isn't I want to take great? a break from doing something it's lately, great. I can just pick it up. Um, you know, right before I go to bed, I just play for a bit. Um, 
Plus, I have really been playing Fire Emblem very slowly, but so that's kind of got most of my attention right now. So, Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, right now it's definitely been the Switch. Um, but probably once I finish that with Fire Emblem, I'm probably going to try and go back and finish the third playthrough of Nier. But, hell, um, yeah, yeah, to answer your question, yes, I have been oh, Switch more. Oh, hell, yeah. Uh, mine's a big nope, uh, because of Destiny. Um, I've been uh, playing my Xbox oh, almost every night now, um, except for when I get too, too busy with other projects. You know, one of the guests I've been trying to book is a big Xbox mark. Really? So it'd be interesting to see you and uh, un- a redacted uh, gender person uh, talk uh, about it. That'd be so interesting, because be I, I don't get to talk to very many people who no, are, most super, people are into not Xbox. super into Xbox yeah, I get people, so... Hurt. I get to hear about how PS4 is so superior all the time. <laughs> like... So, yeah, that, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like, I get it, but I, I also, even though I do play my Sony stuff more, I get the Xbox people's pain, where I'm just like, yeah, I, I can imagine not wanting to hear about it, too. Like, what was really <laughs> funny one time is uh, me and all my friends in high school we're all like getting ready to game and stuff Mm -hmm. and uh they were like no this was a couple of years ago actually um they're still friends from high school but they were setting up their 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 ps4s and they were like now are you gonna play with us and i was like i can't what why and they were like we're all gonna play this game (laughs) on ps4 and i was like you do realize i haven't owned a ps system since like two yeah three two two so yeah my sister owned the three and then Mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts came out and I bought a PS4 and they were like, are you going to buy this game? I was like, no, I'm only using it for like very certain games, guys. Like, take your PS4 away. Like, go. Stick it with my Xbox. There you go. Me and my my other friends still have this war going on about which one's better. But I gotta say, I gotta say that I really do, I wonder what, now of course, Xbox being owned by Microsoft, even they, their whole video game division could tank, and, micro, and uh, Microsoft would just go, "What the fuck was that?" When mm-hmm. it falls off, because there's still billions of dollars in as a company. But mm-hmm. I do find it interesting because I do know. Um, I would say maybe twenty or thirty percent of my friends, which is saying quite a bit for Xbox's credit, that there's still that fighting minority mm-hmm. in my in my friend spot of people who are still been loyal to Xbox since the OG or 360 Mm -hmm. to now. So I got to say, in what looks like a losing war from the fiscal side of things, when their financials come in and Xbox just keeps getting the shit beat out of them by uh, PlayStation, at least this time around, 360 and PS3 was a much more fair fight. Um, I got to say kudos to them for kind of sticking to their guns and the fact that they've already announced a new system. Um, Because... (laughs) They're still, obviously, they're still making at least enough mm-hmm. to keep it the fight going. Like, honestly, I buy the Xbox system before I buy my, any PS4 or any yeah. PS systems yeah. ever. And um, mm-hmm. several people that's in that camp I'm talking about of the people I know still don't have a PlayStation and have no intention to. Yeah. Um, it really does come down, of course, also to what you like because there are, it, it basically comes down to whether you like shooters or not, but also I noticed. It's that it's the ecosystem thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you already have your Xbox thing. You have your achievements built up, and then same thing on PlayStation. You have your trophies. You have your whole thing. You can show off your library. It really is kind of hard to convince yourself to convert once you've really dedicated yourself to one ecosystem or console. Yeah. So, but I do hope that more games start to have crossplay because I do think people should be left up to their device. Uh, you know, and that's why I think it's so funny with PlayStation kicking the snot out of Xbox this generation in sales. Mm-hmm. I think it's so interesting that PlayStation's the most reluctant to have crossplay. Yeah, because you think if anyone mm-hmm. should, it should be Xbox being like, "No, we're going to lose the last three fans." <laughs> it's like, no, like why is PlayStation this? Is PlayStation really one? I, I have two theories: either they're scared that everyone will see their bad net code. Or B, they'll be, they're actually, for some reason, afraid that there's some weird camp of PlayStation players who may convert. Yeah. From every PlayStation mm. mark I know, they have no intention of switching to Xbox ever. Mm-mm. But I'm curious, 
from the big wig side of things, does PlayStation really believe that's a possibility? I'm curious. I'd be very curious to see if they even see that as a threat or why they just don't want to play yeah. fair. Or they really just want to be like, yeah. PlayStation plays best on PlayStation. I remember when they made that Horshin announcement yeah. at <laughs> E3 a couple of years ago. I was just like, you guys are fucking stupid. What a dumb thing to fucking say. <laughs> yeah, everything runs better on bad internet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything plays better. Yeah, oh, I remember that shit too. When they, it was when they fucking made the Rocket League announcement about being oh, cross-play yeah. between Switch, Xbox, and uh, and PC, and everyone was just like, PlayStation cared to comment, and they were just like, why would we want to play with those fuckers when you could play with other PlayStation yeah. people? The best version, <laughs> the best version of Rocket League. Then what people did is they went through a netcode test and a performance test and the playstation's version objectively ran the shittiest on the network <laughs> frame rate and resolution side of things yeah it it, it, it failed all the, te- the tests and it was objectively the worst version to play so it was funny that the guy's quote was playstation the best place to play rocket league yeah. when it's actually the factually shittiest way, place to play it so i just thought it was funny <laughs> when that happened because people just were like got in on there and we were just like actually Lee. and then fucking busted out the <laughs> metrics and we're just like it's actually not but we know what you mean but it's it. actually not so i thought that shit was pretty funny um but Truth, son. playstation's starting to finally give out especially with their fi- their destiny agreement that they signed days before the game was announced but At least they're getting there slowly but surely. They're starting to play nice. And I think they just should. I think you shouldn't be forced. I should be able to, as long as the, uh, I think PC being in its own ecosystem is fair because of mouse and keyboard shit. But I think Xbox, uh, Nintendo, uh, whatever Nintendo's console is being called at the moment and PlayStation should all be able to play with each other in your platform of choice. I'll always be a Switch mark. Uh, you know, fucking Josh can play on PlayStation, you can play on Xbox, and we should still be able to play certain games together. Now, yeah. if there's a big enough frame rate and performance difference that would exclude me on Switch because the Switches can't handle it, I think it's fair to maybe just have Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah. But Xbox and PlayStation are on fair enough terms and grounds, despite all those memes that really trigger me, where they're just like, here's what it looked like on Xbox, when, yeah. like... It obviously doesn't look that pixelated compared to PlayStation 4. They both run at a terrible lock 30. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. yes, PlayStation runs just as bad as Xbox. Oh, yeah. If you're going to go from a PC uh, gamer's eye I, into I think things. That's always something that bothered me is that I couldn't play I don't Call get of that Duty. Meme. Like, I couldn't play Call of Duty with my friends on, P- on well, PS4. Well, bless you. They were doing you a favor. I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that great at Call of Duty anyways, but being able to play zombies with my friends, mm-hmm. who were all playing zombies together just on PS4s. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Switch... I got really good at that game by myself, though. <laughs> speaking of Switch... I know, I know you're talking about... No, you're not, not but, talking about Switch. But speaking of Switch, um, Switch released a brand new game this week, uh, Ring... Fit Adventure. Now, mm. when when Nintendo will never give up on the weird peripherals that no one wants to use. Yeah. You know, they did Labo. They did the mm. Joy-Cons no one wants to use. They did the <laughs> everything. So they're trying again. Okay. This is like three times in one generation where they're trying again. All right. Uh, and they have this RPG. It's an RPG that's out that you... It's supposed to... I really do appreciate that they try to put uh, fitness into everything, and they try to be like, oh, no, but we're trying to put health, too. And I appreciate that. I applaud this. Um, But basically, you put one Joy-Con on a thigh strap, and you put the other Joy-Con on a big old plastic ring, Mm -hmm. and you move really weirdly to play the game. It looks weird. It makes you look like a moron like most Nintendo (laughs) peripherals do. Um, and then it, and then it also makes, forces you to use this thing, this new peripheral that's probably not going to get any third party support. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a thing. It looks fucking stupid. I don't know. Um, oh gosh. it looks weird. I know. <laughs> I'm just going to link below what the Switch, uh, Ring Fit Adventure looks like. But again, where I will give Nintendo kudos, and um, when they went bankrupt with the Wii U and almost died as a company, like actually almost died out, I will give Nintendo all credit for always trying to innovate, because even Sony and Microsoft's bosses said 
that Nintendo does play a very important part because they do the R and D that the other two companies are too scared to do. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, their mascots and lovable characters and stuff and 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 first party titles will forever outshine anything PlayStation or oh, Xbox yeah. drops, especially with the mascots. PlayStation at one point had some great mascots that just don't get games or don't exist mm-hmm. anymore, and Xbox has Master Chief. And um, <laughs> Nintendo still has these lovable characters that they'll always, forever have. And I think that that's why Nintendo always will uh, play an important part in um, R&D and at least trying zany stuff. At least someone's still trying. Yeah. You know, you have PlayStation who will just name stuff PS5 and DualShock 5. And like then you have Xbox who will name stuff stuff this, poorly. All three of us. When we get a chance. Oh, man, that'd be interesting. <laughs> just so we all I look like doofuses. I might go in on a Ring Fit adventure just to play this <laughs> right? dumbass game with you guys. But, um, I mean, and it could be fun. Maybe it's one of it those things. It looks fun. Where it's like Just Dance, where I have fun playing it, but God forbid anyone ever watch me play Just Dance. <laughs> that would be awful, and no one should ever see that. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, so there's that. And, again, I also do applaud them on always trying to have a... Let's play games, but also be healthy. Yeah. Now, of course, they miss the fact that most people I know that are gamers are a bunch of fucking unhealthy fucks. But I appreciate them trying. They're trying to encourage you to lose a little bit of weight, which is never a bad thing to be in shape. No. Has nothing to do with your body look. Body positivity is about, you know, loving yourself. But it also doesn't mean you should also be three steps away from a heart attack. So um, fitness, glad they're at least trying to push that. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Okay. Blizzard again is going to be on the main part of the docket. And if you want to get in on any of this conversation, make sure to hit us up at disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. Once again, that's disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. And you can talk about the nonsense that's coming up, which is, of course, we already kind of touched on it a little bit. BlizzCon's coming November 1st through 3rd. We talked about that during the um, previous cast. But... Blizzard went one step forward by trying to help Blitz Chung and the commentators, and just this week alone went like three steps back, and um, yeah, they're fucking up pretty badly. Um, Thanks, so, Blizzard. God, where do we start here in this juicy, juicy stew of stuff I have? First, they decided to ban a college team mm-hmm. because... They did the same thing, and then just redacted one, and then slapped the team with the same punishment, so people were like, the fuck? Then, they started banning people from their Twitch stream, for saying stuff about Hong Kong. I saw that. And then Congress, fucking the US Congress themselves, goes, the fuck? (laughs) And goes, and goes, could you guys not? Like, the fuck? What the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> they, but they did, uh, Congress, the, 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 the congressmen and women that did talk about it um, to them addressed them very clearly. Mm-hmm. They were like, first of all, please stop saying it's not about the money because obviously. Yeah. Second of all, yeah. you guys are pushing the Chinese agenda and you guys are technically an American company. Do you know what this fucking looks like? This looks fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. And then third of all, um... You guys are basically pushing the promotion of censored... You're basically being anti-free speech. Yeah. Which is obviously not what American, like, ideals are supposed to be pushing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, like, free speech is, like, a really huge thing for Americans. Yep. You know... So for them, they just stop <laughs> on it from money. discourse that's always, like, free speech, bruh. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. And it's just I just find it so fucking hilarious because video games have always been like on the microscope for like politicians and shit. And absolutely. It's like really gonna fucking do this shit and look now now you got Congress on your ass now. Yeah, and so <laughs> it's interesting seeing politicians really starting to realize the impact of video games. So you have this right, and then just a little while ago you have the loot box legislation in the UK mm-hmm. and other European countries now. The loot box legislation isn't really big in Asia because that's just not as bad over there as the addictions are in the Western world. And then in the U.S., unfortunately, pushes for loot boxes have been... The laws here don't really seem to see it that big of a problem because I also think gambling is probably more out of control here. 
But it's interesting to see them under the microscope and under fire in, in at least European countries for loot boxes. Uh, so again, it's interesting to see big, important legal bodies starting to be like, wow, this video game thing, first of all, wow, how much money these guys are fucking making. And then two, wow, the shady shit these guys are doing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. finally stepping in and being like, wow, maybe maybe these guys are serious things and maybe we should give a fuck because these guys could pull some problems that could bite us in the asses as legal bodies. So it's nice to see them finally um, step up and talk about that. Um, Have you guys read some of this letter that they sent to him? Yeah. So they yeah, sent it, to Blizz- Blizzard? It, it's insane. I'll, I'll link the, uh, the the letter below in the, yeah. in the comments. I've yeah. read like a little it's bit of it. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. And then one of the most popular politicians has her name on there too. <laughs> Absolutely, that just makes it great. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's just it's just really awesome. And then like the fact that they're also talking pretty much to Bobby Kotick directly. Yeah, big old scumbag devil horn Bobby Kotick. Uh, you know what's great about Bobby is that he's so villainized. He's a piece of shit. So I mean, I don't care. But he is so villainized that he actually is infamous for making a remark about how it's been hell for his dating life because. Mm-hmm. Anytime he's tried to date anybody, they look up, like, because, you know, he's, like, obviously a big CEO man. Mm-hmm. And anytime you search Bobby Kotick, you can do it right now in Google Image Search. It's just a bunch of pictures of him with devil horns that say, fuck Bobby Kotick. And it's actually made it hard for him to date anybody. But fuck Bobby Kotick, because he's a big billionaire fuckhead who has at least the sense, unlike Randy Pitchford, to at least try to stay out of... You know, Bobby Kotick doesn't try to fire off as a mouthpiece. He's a shitlord behind the scenes on like Randy Pitchford but he's still a shitty person and he still fucks people over and then they try to masquerade like you know it's all these good things I remember someone on social media got into a whole thing with me where I was just when they announced that EA execs were doing a pay cut recently in lieu of the layoffs they were trying to mask it behind but we're doing a pay cut to give bonuses to people um that's fucked up because the pay cut they were taking barely affected their pay, really, compar- you know, comparatively to what they're making. And, yeah, see? Told you. <laughs> and um, on top of that, they also um, didn't really deserve those bonuses to begin with. So those bonuses were basically shaving off little, little dick cheese amounts of their checks and handing it out to look like heroes. But... It was definitely nowhere near enough to hurt them financially. It's not like Iwata who took half a salary cut and then took another half mm-hmm. a salary cut to save Nintendo. It was like <laughs> nothing compared to that. This was just fucking... They didn't even feel that X at their wallet kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it was a lot of money that was distributed among the company. But to them, it was nothing. Yeah. And um, that's basically the thing where I'm just like, you know... Because the guy was just like, well, see, they're being great people. You always should talk to their CEOs. And I'm just like... But look at it objectively, and I explained everything I just said, and they were just, you know, still a raw, raw defender of EA, fuck them. Yeah. I I mean EA, Activision Blizzard, excuse (laughs) me. Android Wilson, aka Andrew Wilson, is is the one that's EA. But, yeah, uh, some stuff that Blizzard did talk about, uh, oh, before that also, one more thing about the politics thing, Um, the... One of the biggest groups that will be protesting at BlizzCon did announce that there is a set time and date for it. Uh, on the first day, November 1st, at noon, there will be a big demonstration outside of BlizzCon. So if you want to get involved, mm-hmm. get your voice heard, be part of the revolution of our time, junior, because revolution of our time is Hong Kong. Uh, the next one's this one. Um, you can go and check that out. Or if you just want to see the fireworks... Um, I, I, I would just get a, a, a thing of popcorn and just right. watch that go down. Um, Man, I wish I could go. Right? right. It's going to be very interesting <laughs> to see that. It's definitely going to be a very could interesting Could have been our BlizzCon. first cast trip, guys. Right? Yeah, one of these years I can't wait to do something like that. Maybe even, now that E3 is going to be this weird press hybrid mess. It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. I don't um, want to see it, though. Anything to add to that stuff? Good on that? Because I'm the next thing I'm gonna talk about has nothing to do with politics, just weird Blizzard shit. Uh, I mean, I think I added my. Yeah, whole you got your, yeah, I got. I know you got your stuff. So good, good, good. Mallory, anything now? Um. Well, I'm I mean, just reading this. Just cover. No, I'm just reading this letter, and they were like, "We totally understand why people are gonna boycott you," and I'm like, "Damn, <laughs> I see yeah. you, Congress." Yep. It's just ridiculous, like. 
we're all about free speech, so and yeah, and especially if you're a U.S. company, like yeah. you can't really stifle U.S. citizens. Like yeah, that. it's really weird, and of course, you're just hiding behind a poli- a very vague TOS. Yeah. Um, now, another interesting thing about that too is the fact that Congress is very clear that this is that you know, although there is some financial shit related, they were basically like, "Look, this isn't about the fucking money. This is about censorship." And the fact that you're basically promoting censorship. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we don't really, like, it's one thing, yes, you gave him back his prize money, but we're more pissed at you about the fucking suspension shit. Undo this shit. Yeah. That's uh, what they were basically they, saying. They did, I thought I saw it, where they suspended three more people over the week. Yeah, and that's the Not thing just, we're talking about. It was, that, that's what, yeah. That's, they were that's, part of the... That's the ones I, I mentioned. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. I, like, I do kind of wish they, they would have this type of attitude with uh, things like YouTube and... <laughs> Google, because of course Google owns YouTube, but of course this China's involved here. So. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah of the, course the yeah. political agenda does reach. Yeah. It has, it has yeah. its weird skeletons behind the puppet strings, but um, still interesting nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, now, some non political shit for the two of you that are left. Um, <laughs> some, Thank interesting, you guys. some interesting stuff that is speculated because of A, some supposed insider shit, and then B, because this has to be the ass kissing BlizzCon to end all BlizzCons, where they they gotta be kissing the fans' asses at this one in terms of mm-hmm. fan service and to try to win people back. Because oh, right, the Overwatch thing that I was gonna talk about. Real mini uh, first impressions and quick thing of Overwatch. Bad port for Switch, by the way. It's bad. Is it? It runs bad. If anything, this whole fiasco has been a great PR cover up for people to not be talking about Switch Overwatch being really <laughs> shitty. Uh, it's bad. Uh, the downscale... See, when you lose graphical integrity like you did in Witcher and Sinking City and other stuff, but then you save it with the game still being intact and it looking decent for the most part, you're good there. When you're a thing like Overwatch, where you drop from 60 to a, a supposed lock 30, can't meet the target frame rate, and then the graphics are still bad, no bueno. So, um, and not to mention, a lot of people were still uh, boycotting it, so this is all through the looking glass... But I saw that shit, and I don't need to have it in my hands to know that that's no good of a port. Um, but that's also a thing, too, to note, is that a lot of people uh, did take the route that I did take where a lot of people are, A, not playing Overwatch and, and other games right now because of it, and B, did cancel their, their orders of mm-hmm. Overwatch or Switch. And it turned out we dodged a bullet, because it's bad. It's really okay. bad. It's just objectively bad. Like, politics aside, Blizzard being a shitty company out of... Uh, at the moment, out uh, aside, it's just a bad port. So stay away from that. Um, do not get Overwatch for Switch. And if you did already, sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes it's not great to get stuff at launch. Yeah. Um, so there's that. So going back to what I was saying about this having to be the fan service uh, of fan service right now, one of the rumored things that supposedly uh, it will be announced is that they are going to be releasing a remaster of the best Diablo game, Diablo 2. Apparently, a really cool, uh, well-worked remaster is coming out of that. They're also supposed to, and this seems to be making up for the last time, plus this nonsense, uh, Diablo 4 proper. Mm-hmm. It's, it looks like it's probably going to be announced to A, make up for the Diablo Mortal uh, fiasco, and then B, again, they got to do it. And then finally, some supposedly reliable intel says that Overwatch 2 is allegedly going to be announced as well at BlizzCon. Mm. So, we'll see. I, we, I talked about this before with several people, and I would definitely think that this is where I'm going to take the focus on, unless you guys really do want to talk about the Diablo side of things. Um, when I initially enjoyed Overwatch and saw where it's going. And I, I still think the game's okay for the most part, despite all this thing. It had nothing to do with the game changing. It's just a bad port slash politics. Um, I was curious when they would eventually decide to sequelize Overwatch. Because Overwatch has been out for a while now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on top of that, how much are you going to change about it? And then if you don't, how do you justify not just having another season? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like... So I'm very curious to see what they do with it. Any, any ideas that you guys think change-wise? Do you guys think it's going to be more of the same and just time to sell everyone a $60 game again because we about supported 
<laughs> the sixty dollars we got out of this one plus all the loot box revenue? Or, or, or <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of gonna... thinking it's going to be that. Uh, the the one thing I definitely find strange is that you know how many years do one of their games usually last before a sequel's made? There's no StarCraft three. Yep. Uh, they haven't made Warcraft like ever. Like, yeah. Ever since World of Warcraft. It's been a while. Um, yeah. You know how many years between Diablo two and three? A like lot. And then now they're finally they're, they're oh we'll make Overwatch two. It's like uh, it kind of seems like you're just grabbing from our cash. Yep, I think that's got to be it, man. That only if they do announce this because again everyone that's losing their mind if this doesn't end up being true, it is speculation. But if they do announce it, I I definitely reflect those sentiments. I think that like to me, basically Overwatch said all right. So, based on loot boxes and game sales at 60 bucks a pop, now 40 bucks a pop, depending, because now the game has dropped to 40 now, um, this is how much it's worth supporting. And now we hit this threshold, so it's time for a new one. That's the only thing I can really think of, is that mm-hmm. it's going to be. Because the other problem is, when you sequelize something, especially something like this, where you have a definitive play style, if you do Overwatch 2, unless they do call it Overwatch subtitle and maybe it's not truly a two Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a spin-off game that's the only thing i can really see where they can appropriately switch it over to uh justifying another game again if it's not really a sequel and change the gameplay mechanics where it's like say it's called overwatch siege or some shit like Mm -hmm. that and it's an fps using uh, like just more of a pure not moba but a narrative driven uh you're talking about black watch and all this shit uh, and it's going to be a single player, maybe or maybe co-op, two people, mm-hmm. uh, narrative shooter, and it's going to be called like Overwatch, some subtitle. Then maybe I could see this being an announcement that makes more sense. But to have a game where, like you were pointing out, Josh, this would be the quickest turnaround in one of their franchises in a while, where you're just like four years and now it's two already. Yeah, I think it's been four years. 2016, I think, was when an OG Overwatch dropped. I'm fairly confident. I want to say it's 2016. Yeah, I'm fairly but confident. I don't know. That. These past few years have been a blur for it, me. It has, man. We had that we, we were, when we were at the hookah bar the other day. We had that. Uh, I told you I had my fucking brain fuck moment when I was just like, we played Destiny 1 when, and I lost my mind. <laughs> 2016. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, just 2016. Yep. Okay, yep, yep. So, yeah, uh, this would be the quickest turnaround, definitely, for one of the franchises in a long time to do four years and then drop another game. Again, mm-hmm. unless it's a spinoff. But we'll see. We'll definitely see. Mallory, anything on that? Are you exciting Overwatch talk? I uh, I don't play Overwatch. All right. I think it's and cool. on that note, that was the final <laughs> no I needed to hear. You can listen to all the episodes of Disconnected Cast every week at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time at Disconnected Disconnect. This is the third week in a row. I fucked up the URL. I need to stop having so much caffeine. <laughs> disconnectedcast.com and we'll see you guys next week until then see ya bye, bye.